there's more to sanding than you might think. So sanding might not be one of the most fun things that we do in the studio, but it is a really important step in getting a good final finish on our pieces. The, one of the most important things to know with sanding is that there are different types of sanding products for different types of materials that you might be working with. So here I'm going to focus on uh, getting a good final finish on metal, but there are sandpapers that are engineered for like woods and plastics. So you want to be sure when you're purchasing your materials that uh, you're paying attention to uh, what kind of sandpaper you're getting uh, based on the kind of metal or material that you're going to be using it on. So there is no shortcuts with sanding and just like with polishing you're making finer and finer scratches to get that final finish so it's important to keep your grits organized and to work from the coarsest grit to the finest grit uh, they're numbered based on the the kind of the little granules or grit per inch on the material and so 100 would be a much more coarse grit than say 400 or 600. Uh, one thing that i do in the studio is uh, I have a little file folder and I keep all of my papers organized based on their kinds and the grit number because sometimes when you tear it down to a small piece it doesn't have the number printed on it anymore. So this is a little organizational trick that I use. Um, as you're sanding, uh, again you just start with the coarsest grit and work your way down because you want to remove any random scratches so that your final finish just looks clear and intentional. One of my favorite sanding products are these little sanding sticks. Uh, certainly you don't have to have them, but they're great for keeping a nice flat plane as you're sanding. And then you can just sort of advance the belt through as you need. So uh, I use these regularly. They also have kind of the jumbo version based on the scale of the work that, that you're uh, that you're using uh, that can also come in handy. I mark the, the grit number of the belt on the side so that I don't get mixed up um, and don't necessarily remember the color coding. Now, if you don't want to invest in sanding sticks, you certainly don't have to. You can make your own. You can just take a piece of sandpaper, wrap it around a wooden stick, or in this case, I've wrapped it around a file uh, just to keep a nice flat plane for when I'm sanding and working on a piece. Um, so with sanding away, uh, one important trick to be able to see as you're moving through the grits and removing the scratches is to rotate the direction of the sanding. Now, unlike filing, you can go in both directions because the grit is not teeth like on a file. So that's 120. And then I'm just going to rotate. And the next belt here is 240. And then by going at an angle to where I previously sanded, you can see as you're getting those rougher scratches out. And you don't want to take any shortcuts. Like I said, it might not be the most fun task that we do in the studio. Um, but if you don't get those big scratches out now, you're not going to get them out in later stages. So you get, get the idea, just working your way through those different incremental grits. And you can still see there's a little bit more work to do. Uh, but I've gotten most of all of the scratches of the 120 out. And then I would just continue kind of rotating as I move into uh, 320 in a, in a different orientation than the 240 grit, and so on and so on. So I think it's pretty straightforward and self-explanatory. Another product that is like sanding sticks are diamond files, but even though they're called files, uh, they have a fine industrial diamond grit on them. And so they, they work like a miniature sanding stick and uh, can even be used wet on uh, glass or ceramics or something like that. So again, you could use them in precise little areas that you might need. And even though it's called a file, you can go back and forth and it will abrade through or create a, uh, a final finish on the surface of the metal. So it's pretty pretty straightforward introduction to sanding. It takes a fair amount of time in the studio, uh, but it's a pretty straightforward process just as long as you don't take any shortcuts. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you can hear from me when I post future videos. Thanks for stopping by.